So the next one is sentence improvement. Let's quickly look at it. The government will relaunch the Kisan Vikas Patra scheme, hoping to lure investors away from gold and fraudulent schemes by offering attractive terms. So, so hoping to lure is a highlighted phrase. The options are hoping to luring, in hopes to luring, to hope and lure, hopes to lure. Yeah, so most of you came back and said E. Since most of you are saying E, let's keep that in the parking lot. Let's look at D, okay? The government will relaunch the Kishan, uh, Kisan Vikas Patra scheme. If I have to use D as it is, see, this is clause 1. Henna. If I have to do, if I have to redo clause 2, I will say the government hopes to lure. This is second clause, it will become, right? Hopes to lure investors, blah, blah, blah. That entire sentence, right? This will be clause 2. Now, if I have to connect these two clauses and make sense with hopes to lure as a phrase, I have to add and. The government will relaunch the Kisan Vikas Patra scheme and hopes to lure and then it makes sense. But and is not there, I can't use D. Out. What about, did any of you say C? Nobody said C, right? Let me go back. Okay, I don't see anybody having said C. So that's why I can't use D. Okay, great. Now, let's look at C. The government will relaunch the Kisan Vikas Patra scheme to hope and lure. That doesn't make sense, right? I, don't, I hope nobody said C because I can't use this suddenly infinitive there. The government will relaunch the Kisan Vikas Patra scheme in hopes to luring 2 plus infinitive form I need verb 1. I don't need the ing form. So likewise A also has the same form. So out in hopes of luring yes that can also make sense. The government will relaunch the Kisan Vikas Patra scheme hoping to do something. What, is, what does it want to do? To lure is correct. That's the right infinitive form 2 plus verb 1. To lure investors away from gold and blah blah blah. Okay, followed. So our answer obviously is no correction required. Got it? It is not, it cannot be A and B because it's not in the right form. To luring, incorrect. To lure, verb 1, I don't need the ing form. Hoping to do something. He's hoping to meet me, right? Hoping is your clue word there. To ensure that 2 is followed by verb 1 and not an ing form. You're hoping that someone will do something or you're hoping to do something right that's the construction sentence construction yeah nearly half and dozen were funds have raised over 1 billion between january and mid november 2014 half and dozen uh, is the highlighted phrase options are half and dozens funds half of a dozens fund half a dozen fund half a dozen funds no correction required so when you say half a dozen what's a dozen give me a dozen bananas 12 half a dozen is six more than one right so when you have more than one which noun number will it follow? Plural noun number, right? Not a singular noun number. So, funds is correct. Yeah. So, option D. Yeah. Everybody clear? Yeah. It's a set. But still, in terms of the noun number that follows, Australian team performance manager Pat Howard said that Captain Michael Clark has virtually no chance of playing in the high profile series against India. Has virtually is our highlighted phrase. What's the options? Had virtually, was virtually, has however, is having, no correction required. What is going to be the answer? The clue is right there, right? It's in the general tense and the tense is past tense. He said that, what did he say? He finished saying it, right? Captain Michael Clark had virtually. That's why it's had and not anything else. Though it sounds correct, pay attention to the tense. He said that. It doesn't say uh, he says that. Hey na? So when you read it, you, you feel like everything is fine. But he finished saying this, no? Okay, easy one. Just you overlook things like this. 100 plants and animals are lost every day due to deforestation and urbanization. 100 of plant, 100 of... Wait, the noun number following it is incorrect, right? So it cannot be option A. Right? Yeah? I don't know what uh, all of you came back and said hundreds of, okay, most of you said option B. The same with um, C as well. The noun numbers have to agree with the numbers, right? Plants, hundreds, hundreds plantation, that doesn't make sense. So when I say, yeah, the only thing is when you when you look at hundred plants and animals, it, it, it probably talking about just that one particular, uh, you know, animal species. Are we referring to just one type of animal or are we talking about different types of animals and plants? That only option B gives us the clarity, right? When I say hundreds of plants and animals, I'm talking about a variety. 
different types of plants and animals. So what is wrong with the given context which is highlighted in the sentence? When I just say 100 plants and animals, it is only referring to one variety of that particular plant or animal but that cannot be the case right it cannot be only that one type species of animal or one variety of plant that is causing the deforestation and urbanization it's all put together this one option b okay the world's climate is always has always changing and species has evolved accordingly to survive it when you're reading it only you know there's a clue word you need a particular verb form uh, which option is giving you that what can you quickly eliminate in fact, I would retain change only because of this clue word has, right? It has to follow, when I have a perfect tense, it has to follow a verb 3 pattern. So, I will not eliminate change, no? Why would I do that? Okay, let's apply a little bit of logic, okay? I can say the world's climate has always been changing. That is also, in terms of grammar, I could say that. I can also say the world's climate has always changed, okay? Both the context, but then I have to look at the only difference is species has or species have, Right? I can I can I can do that as well huh so the only difference I have to choose between species have and species has right now which will I choose and we're talking about world evolving right so we are we referring to just one definitely we're referring it's a plural noun yes species is a plural noun as it is okay so the verb that follows will be have so your quick method to eliminate the wrong answer option is anything that has has you eliminate that first okay and if you look at option d the world's climate has always changed or species what is this or doing here doesn't make sense right it has to be option c okay understand a species a group of um, animals or plants however we are referring to plural now and, and see, an, another way for you to quickly um, identify this is, can I count, it's, it's countable, right? Can I count the species? Anything that is countable will follow a plural verb, will have a plural verb following. Hey na? Uncountable nouns, singular verb. Countable nouns, plural verb. I can count the number of species, right? Are you following? Keep that in mind. So, just, just a clue for you next time. So, you know this is countable, okay? And it follows a, it's a plural noun number. So it is followed by a plural verb. Just keep this in mind. Yadav, I took the cycle which he bought yesterday. Options, that he bought yesterday, which he had bought yesterday, that he has bought yesterday, no improvement. Query, what's a query? Madam, I learned that which is used for living things. Says who? So I went with option 4. What went wrong? Please explain. Which is not used for living things, no Baba? Which is used specifically for things which are not living. Right? I mean, relative pronouns. Right? We know this, right? Who is for people? Which is for things? Other than people, that is for both things and people. Where denotes place. Whose denotes possession. This is the basic of relative pronouns. And why they are, why they substitute, what do they substitute in a particular context, right? So having said that, to answer your question, which is not used for living things, first of all, right? So that is incorrect. So I went with option four is probably because you got you got the whole concept incorrect. I could say I took the cycle which he had bought yesterday, right? Which is fine in terms of construction. I'm talking about two actions in the past. So yes, right? So I mean, just to answer Yadav's question, you got the concept incorrect. So that is what went wrong. What went wrong? That is what went wrong, right? In fact, you know, I would say that he had bought today. I would, I would prefer that to which in terms of the relative pronoun because uh, that kind of, you know, always limits information, which adds information that limits information. So out of all the cycles, I bought the one that he or I took the one that he had bought yesterday. So because one doesn't have the past perfect tense, but still, I would prefer that as a relative pronoun instead of which. So, I would include my own option saying that he had bought yesterday. And I would say that that is more precise for me. I took the cycle that he had bought yesterday. But that option is not there. So, yeah.